Hello, Carlos. All right. Hello. Hello, Victor. <laughs> and hello, Carlos. And hello, Minor. Hello. How are you, teacher? I'm really good. How are you? Fine, thank you. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Okay, thank you. Good, good. Um, and let's see, we have Victor, Carlos. Um, hello, Carlos. I don't know if you can hear me. Maybe you've stepped away. Um, no, Carlos, we can't hear you. All right, so he'll restart there. Um, and we should have a full class tonight, so we'll just give a minute for everyone Hi, to Nelly. join us. Hello, Ali. <laughs> Hi, teacher. How are you? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> I am a little bit upset because the uh, warbling page is very slow. I couldn't join. <laughs> oh, no. Um, yeah, I had to close out my tab on Google Chrome when I went to start this lesson. It wasn't loading, so I, I closed it out um, and reopened it. It helped a little, but it was still slower than normal for me as well. Um, they also, I was, I wanted to ask, did from my um, on my login when I log in, everything is different. Like they they change the format of the website. Is that the same for you all? Yeah. Okay. Last week it was how to say vertical design, right? Yeah. Now, now it's horizontal. Yeah. <laughs> I usually they email when they're gonna do a a change. I I guess it's not that big of a change, but um, it was new to me when I logged in yesterday. Um, but anyhow, um, working. Oh. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, Carlos. Hello. Ah, okay. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Fine. Thank you. Good. And is this your first class with me? Yeah, I think it's the second one. Okay. Okay. Good to see you again then. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. And Boca, hello. Okay. And Maria, hello. All right, so hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, Maria, hello. Hello. How are you today? I'm very well, thanks. Good, good. Uh, and are you new to my class? Yes, uh, it's my first class with you. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay, I thought so. Um, well, it's very nice to meet you. Um, where are you from? I'm from Madrid, Spain. Wonderful. Um, welcome. Glad you're here. Thanks. Um, all right. So with that, we'll get started as quickly as we can. Um, I posted the link in the Verbling chat. Um, and hopefully you were also able to access it through um, the class description. Um, these are a series of lessons from ESLlibrary.com. And I really like them because they give many opportunities for authentic speaking practice. Um, so throughout the lesson, you should um, get chances to form an opinion and then share your opinion with the rest of the class. Um, some of these can be quite controversial, um, and we can get a really good link go. Uh, really good conversation going. Um, tonight's topic is end of sushi. 
So I don't know how controversial it will be. Um, I'm curious to see what they mean by end of sushi. Um, but the idea is that you'll get lots of chances to speak. Um, we'll have a couple of warm-up questions just to get us thinking about the topic, sharing some ideas, and then we will have a short reading. Um, it's usually five or six paragraphs, and I will ask that you all each take a paragraph to read out loud for the class. Um, just a little more speaking practice that way. So with that, let's go into the lesson. Um, the end of sushi. Um, all right, here we are. And there's some pre-reading questions. And, oh, actually, before that, there is a quote. I do like to read the quote um, and then ask someone to interpret what the quote might mean. Quote says, one of the world's largest trawl nets could encircle more than a dozen Boeing 747 jetliners at its opening. All right, so does anyone have any idea why this quote is here or what it might mean? Mm -hmm. I think it's all about uh, the uh, modern trawl trawlers or trawl nets has a huge amount, huge uh, sizes that it's yeah. can can carry a lot of fish. Yeah, yeah. So think about that size. That's enormous. So mm -hmm. if they must be catching just vast quantities of seafood. Uh, so that's probably introducing us to the problem in this topic. Um, good, thanks, Victor. So, quick warm-up question. Uh, do you enjoy eating seafood? Um, and for this lesson, I don't always call on people, but I do like to hear from everyone. So, um, let's Let's see, Ali, do you enjoy eating seafood? Uh, not too much. Uh, <laughs> it's not a problem. I like uh, eating fish or other seafoods, but uh, uh, not my favorite, you know? Okay, yeah, good. So, so you don't mind it, but it's not your favorite cuisine. Yeah. Good. Um, how about you, Carlos? Do you enjoy eating seafood? Yes, I, I like a lot. Um, here in my my country, um, in Spain, uh, we love a lot. Um, no, we like a lot uh, caldo frito. Is it? I don't know how you can. Caldo is octopus. I ah. think. No, well, no, it's not pesca. Uh, uh, it's like uh, yes. Oh, yeah, that's but, but also um, a lot of kinds of fishes. Okay. okay so I, I like that. Nice. Good. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Octopus is pulpo. I forgot. Okay. <laughs> um, nice. Great. How about you, Maria? Do you enjoy eating seafood? Yes, I, I enjoy eating seafood. Uh, I, I uh, when I go to visit to my family in Galicia, mm -hmm. Galicia is the north is in the north part of Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to have uh, mariscadas, that is um, uh, a Spanish uh, word to describe uh, a dish with a lot of kind of seafoods. Oh, that sounds delicious! Yeah. Wow, yeah. that sounds really good. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Well, I'm getting hungry. Um, good, so you do enjoy quite a lot. <laughs> yes. Good. Um, Minor, how about you? Do you enjoy eating seafood? Actually, I do. Um, I love to eat uh, shrimps, mm. but uh, in my country, uh, to eat shrimps is uh, expensive. Um, and what? where are you from again? I'm from Guatemala. 
Guatemala. Okay, so it's one of the higher priced foods there. Truly. Sorry. So it's one of the expensive foods there. Yeah, but the seafood is specifically. Okay. Okay. Sounds sounds like a delicacy. Sounds delicious. Good. And it's, it's most common. Sorry, it's most common to eat uh, chicken because it's uh, cheaper. Okay. Okay. So, so seafood is reserved for those with more money, or special occasions, maybe. Yeah. Interesting. Good. Interesting. Thank you for sharing. Um, Thayer, how about you? Do you enjoy eating seafood? Oh yes, I like to eat seafood because. Is, um, I mean, I'm so close to, to sea here in my city, so I like, we used to eat always seafood. Nice. Like fish. Yeah. Oh, and I suppose it's very, very fresh there if you're by the ocean. Oh, uh, yeah. Good, wonderful. And Victor, how about you? Yes, I do enjoy eating seafood. I don't like fishing, but I like eating fish. Okay, so you won't be the one catching the fish, um, exactly. but you'll be there for dinner. <laughs> Good. Um, great. I personally love seafood. Um, even this short talk about seafood is getting me craving seafood. Um, the place where I am from in the United States is very far from the oceans. Uh, it's in the center and north of the country, so there's no ocean. Uh, nearest ocean is over a thousand miles away. Um, but we have tons of lakes and rivers, so a lot of fresh lake seafood. Um, and it's probably one of my favorite kinds of food. Um, good, thanks everyone for chiming in on that. For number two, let's look at number two. Um, do you think our oceans will still be full of fish 50 years from now? Um, for this question, I'll just kind of open it up to whomever would like to respond. Um, I won't go through uh, and call on everyone, but what do you think? Do you think our oceans will still be full of fish in 50 years? I think I so, think yes, so. because 50 years are not so big amount of time. Okay, good. Good, yeah, so 50 years is a short amount of time, so yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, anyone else? Other thoughts? I think that um, the lakes and also the rivers, uh, there are a lot of pollution now, and they make that uh, fish die. Oh, okay, okay, so fish are dying due to pollution, so that may have an impact on the number of fish in the future. Yeah. Good. Other thoughts? I think uh, there, are, there is also a, a lot of pollution, and each time uh, there are less kind of uh, fish or animals in the oceans. So uh, we have to to change what we are doing. Okay. So yeah. So there is a danger of of there yes. not being fish. Yeah. Yes. Uh, great. Um, excellent. Anyone else? Other thoughts? Yeah. I just wondering how many fish every day die in sea, and how many human die on the ground. Hmm. Oh, great question. Great question. I wish there was a way we could answer that. Um, okay, you don't have to answer. No, but I. That's. It's really. It's a thought-provoking question. Um, because we know. I'm sure millions and millions of fish die every day. Um, especially if they're using these huge nets to catch them. Um, but humans also die every day. Good, really good thought-provoking question. Any any comments on that question, anyone? I think also due to the to the human consume the human consume of fish is increase human co human communities increase every day. We are 
assisting a develop of the numbers of humans on the earth and also due to the methods of fishing methods that are very dangerous and no very conservative there are I don't know the name but there are many methods of fishing that are so dangerous that many species of fish are in danger of extinction um, for this reason I think uh, in 50 years for now perhaps we assist to a decrease of many species of fishing on the earth on, on the water mm, yeah good you brought up some really good points um, yeah the methods of fishing have a are not always humane or not uh, good for the fishing population or for the fish population excuse me um, and and with popula human population increasing the consumption of fish is going up as well yeah good points um, anyone else any points uh, any comments or anything else on this question or any of the comments I think that the the worst thing to the to the uh, to the fish uh, is the rubbish and the pollution. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and so it's not just humans catching them for dinner, but the pollution in and the and the garbage, the rubbish in the in the ocean, causing them to die as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good point. Really good point. Um. And, uh, a different story. It's about quality of fish. Maybe it will still full of fish, but um, probably it was it will be impossible to eat this fish. Mm. Oh, good point. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. So maybe there will be fish, but they won't be the type that we can eat, um, or the quality will be so bad it won't be edible. Great. Good. Um, all right, and so then let's look at question three. What are the environmental dangers of overfishing? Um, so we've already mentioned a little bit pollution, um, but what are the environmental dangers of overfishing? I think if we uh, if we take a lot of fish from the oceans, uh, these uh, fish uh, then they are not going to um, uh, to be the food of other bigger fish, <laughs> and uh, then uh, it can be it could be a, a environmental disaster. Oh, yeah. Because we because we need all kind of of animals in the ocean and in the earth. Yeah, yeah, really good. So, so by eating the smaller fish, we're kind of messing up the food chain um, by taking the food that should be eaten by the bigger fish. Yeah. Good. Anyone else? Other environmental dangers? Mm, I think mm, we have a chain of food uh, animals food um, the first step in this chain could be the fish and the little fish fishes um, crisis uh, crisis I think the little fish that call crisis uh, are decreasing right now and if we are assisting to a decrease of these little fish in the chain of food it's so dangerous also for humanity because we are all in this chain of food um, for this reason could be um, so dangerous if fish species disappear in less than 30 years or 50 years could be so dangerous. Mm -hmm. So we're impacting not only the the fish food chain but we're all connected to the chain so we could be causing unforeseen problems to ourselves and other animals as well. Mm. Good, yeah. And uh, maybe uh, fishing uh, on the wrong season is not good. Uh, uh, when 
how to say fish reproduce their selves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you are um, fishing, it's not good. I heard uh, on TV in my country some fishermen got fine because uh, they catch a small fish, <laughs> a lot of small fish, and uh, government uh, give them fine. Ah, oh, because it was the wrong time of year. He was fishing during uh, their reproductive season. No, uh, you have to uh, give uh, back a small fish uh, if if uh, you they catch uh, on your net. Mm. You have to throw them uh, back I see. in the ocean. Uh, but uh, some of fishermen didn't do that. I heard on uh, TV. Uh, it was yesterday or two days ago. Mm. <laughs> uh, they got uh, fine. That seems like a good law. So, yeah, so it's illegal to take young fish out of the ocean um, before they've had a chance to reproduce. Um, yeah, that's probably a really good law. Um, yeah, good, thanks. Um, anyone else, any comments on that question or any of the other questions? All right, let's go on then. Um, with these lessons, there is, there's a lot more than we could ever cover in one hour. Um, so when I do these lessons, the focus is on speaking, and so I skip the vocabulary. Um, we address vocabulary as we go through the reading. So rather than go through all of these and maybe spend time on vocabulary you don't need or already know, um, we'll address vocabulary as we go through the reading. Um, so the next part is the reading, and there are five paragraphs, so I will ask for five volunteers. Um, we will stop at the end of each paragraph to address any language questions you have, whether it's vocabulary or anything else. Um, and also any comments that you have after the paragraph. Okay. Um, all right. So, do I have a volunteer for paragraph one? Me. Um, and who is that? I didn't catch it. I'm sorry. Uh, Carlos? <laughs> Carlos? Okay. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, Carlos. Thank you very much. Okay. What's your favorite type of sushi? Do you prefer tuna, salmon, or Hollywood? Maybe you don't have a theme for a raw fish. Perhaps barbecued, fruit or willet prawns, some more appetizing. Uh, approximately one billion people really on some forms of seafood as their main source of protein. As the human population grows, fish population is steadily declining. Marine biologists warn that all types of fish could go extinct within a few de decades. If we continue our fishing, oh, it's, it's difficult. <laughs> Some words. <laughs> yes, this is a pretty advanced love, but you did nice work with it. Very nice. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, great. So, any questions from anyone on vocabulary, language, or or content? Yes, I don't know the meaning of halibut. Oh, halibut is a type of fish. I'm not sure exactly. So let's get a picture really quick. Um, it'll be this guy. There's a <laughs> an Atlantic halibut. That must be a cartoon. I can't imagine its eyes really look like that. Scary, scary fish. <laughs> Let's hope they taste better than they look. <laughs> good, good question. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, great. Any other questions? Um, what does it mean, have a thing for? Good. So this is a um, an idiom. It's kind of an informal idiom. But when you have a thing for something, it means you really like it. Um, and this is actually often used with people. Um, so if, if you like someone in a romantic way, you might say you have a thing for that person. Um, 
or if you if you're a, a fan of a celebrity, you might have a thing for that person. Um, and it applies to foods and and sports and color anything that you can like you can have a thing for good yeah okay thank you great question great question other questions and drought and prawns it's uh, yes. another other thing kinds of fish right yep yeah, trout is I believe a, I want to say it's a river fish but don't quote me on that um, I think it's one of the delicious fish. I'm not sure. I'm I'm a I have a thing for tuna myself. Um, but here's a trout, a rainbow trout. Um, and then prawns are actually the British English word for shrimp. So in American English, we'll say shrimp, but in in Europe, you'll probably see prawns more commonly. No. Okay. Good. Other questions? Good. So just as we had mentioned in the warm-up conversation, uh, we see a relationship between human population and fish population. Kind of a frightening relationship. Uh, all right. Can I get a volunteer for paragraph two? Okay, I want to read it. All right, Minor, go ahead. Okay. An early example of overfishing took place in the 80s. A a human. Sorry, 18, sorry? 1800s is how okay, we read that. 1800s. 1800s. A humans began killing. Ways for lamb oil. As humans learned new ways to fish in the 20th century, demands for protein rich food increased. Commercial fishers began to take the place of local fishermen. Before long, custom customers were able to choose from a wide variety of uh, seafood from all over the world. Great, very nice, thank you very much. Um, so big changes to the fishing world um, two centuries ago uh, and last century. Any questions on any of the language? All right, good. Um, good, so one probably really important thing is this fact. Um, before this time, fish were, were taken from the ocean by local fishermen. Um, but then in the age of industrialization, um, commercial fisheries began. So they came with their huge nets and their um, ability to take out much, much more from the ocean. All right. And let's continue then. If there are no questions, we'll go on to paragraph three. And do I have a volunteer for paragraph three? Me, maybe me. All right. Who, who was that? Sorry. Me, Ali. Ali, Ali. OK, go ahead, Ali. Thank you. Okay. As the fish populations decrease, commercial fishing fleets come up with new ways to find and catch fish. Today, commercial fishing companies use massive nets and hunt for fish in deeper parts of the oceans. Some large ocean fish, such as uh, bluefin tuna, have declined by 90% in recent years. Birds, bears, and other animals that rely on fish for, for food are dying off too. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Questions or comments on this paragraph? Uh, 
bluefin or bluefin? I bluefin. I'm not sure. Bluefin, bluefin. Um, it's a type of tuna. I've actually never heard of it before. Um, I've heard of yellowfin tuna. It's one of my favorites, <laughs> uh, but I have never heard of bluefin tuna. So it must be um, just a type of tuna. We'll see if we can get a picture really quick. Yeah, so that looks like that's what it is. Oh boy, it looks delicious. <laughs> but unfortunately, uh, it looks like it's in danger of going in extinct. Hmm. Um, good question. Any other questions, comments? All right. Yeah, and so it sounds like we're seeing that impact on the food chain um, that we had discussed at the start of class. Um, good. All right. So paragraph four and a volunteer. Me, for example. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, okay. Maria. Unsustainable fishing methods are largely uh, to blame for this environmental disaster. For every pound of, of fish that makes uh, it to the grocery store or restaurant, uh, approximately five pounds of a uh, bycatch gets thrown back overboard. This marine leaf that it caught unintentionally often dies before returning to the water. In addition to this waste, uh, waste wastage, mm -hmm. approximately 20-45% uh, of fish that is cut uh, for good for food goes uneaten. Some fish spoils in root while other fish is wasted at the restaurant or dinner table. Wow. Excellent. Thank you for reading that. Um, good. So questions on this paragraph or comments? Uh, for me, they were by cuts. <laughs> I don't understand. Good. Yeah, that was new for me as well. Um, I'm guessing that it is um, when they're fishing with a net, they don't only catch the fish they want, but they catch other things. But let's look at their official definition here. Um, bycatch is probably going to be um, marine life that is caught accidentally and returned to the sea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so things we maybe can't eat, things they didn't want to catch. Good. Other questions? Spoil and route. Good. Good. So to spoil is to go bad. Um, so your milk might spoil and turn sour. Your fish might spoil and smell and taste awful and make you sick. En route is a phrase we have borrowed directly from French. And it means uh, literally on the route or on the way. So some fish spoils while it is going to the grocery store or while it's on its way to the restaurant. Um, um, okay. Yeah. Good. I got you. Okay, good. We could quickly... Yeah, on the way to a destination is en route. Okay. Good, good. And then spoils is to become rotten. Yeah. Good questions. Other questions or comments? All right, kind of some surprising statistics here. Um, this one particularly about the bycatch, that was something I would not have thought of. Um, and it seems incredibly wasteful and damaging. 
All right. Um, paragraph five. Can I have a volunteer, please, to read paragraph five? Okay, I can read. All right, go ahead. How can the average seafood lover help prevent a mass extinction of marine life? Fish farms may not be the answer. It takes about five kilograms of captured fish to hit one kilogram of farmed salmon. Environmentalists recommend other solutions such as reducing consumption and buying local seafood. People can also support fishing class and marine sanctuaries, teaching kids and youth about overfishing and the destruction of the food chain may be the most important thing to do. Should we take kids to aquariums to do this? All right. Great. Thank you for reading that. Um, questions on this paragraph? Um, sanctuaries. 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 Good. Um, a marine sanctuary would be like a protected place for marine life. Let's look at their official definition. Um, a safe place without any disturbances. Um, churches are often referred to as sanctuaries. Like shelter? Yeah, shelter would be a good synonym of it. Yeah. Good question. Other questions? Excellent. All right. So um, this paragraph's kind of trying to mention some of the possible um, remedies to this problem of overfishing. Uh, if there are no further comments, we'll go ahead to the um, discussion questions. Um, so again, as I said, these lessons are full of really great vocabulary. Um, lots of idioms come up that are great, and we will get back to those if we have some time. But the purpose here is uh, for speaking, so we are going to go to the discussion questions. Um, so first discussion question, is overfishing one of the most important environmental concerns for this generation? And we'll open that to anyone. Which generation exactly do you mean? Ah, good question. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess let's uh, let's kind of let's just say uh, people who are adults right now, maybe. Okay. I think that overfishing is one of the important environmental problems that we have now, but there are a lot of problems of this of this kind. So it's important, but it's not the only thing important that happened. Mm, good, yeah. Good. I, I agree. I have to agree. Uh, it's important, but we also have global warming. Um, exactly. And, and, <laughs> and many the, other the things. Pollution, I think, the most important thing. Uh, pollution is. Will you say more about that? Yeah. <laughs> there, it's pollution is kind of tied to all of the. Pollution is almost like an underlying problem for all the environmental concerns. It contributes to global warming, contributes to the health of, of marine life. Yeah, so very important. Good. Continue on the line, if I may. <laughs> Perhaps overfishing could be uh, one important environmental problem in the next few years, but we are assisting to others that I, I think is are more important as uh, developing new techniques about against the cancer or environmental problems as we are saying in pollution or greenhouse effect and others. Um, fishing um, or fish I think is no more 
um, a 30% of the food that we eat almost every day. And for this reason, it's not so important. Perhaps we can find um, salters or or farmers or fishing that have another problems. But nowadays, there are a lot of tuna that it's are growing up in in these shelters, in this farm, fish farm, and um, for this reason, it's not so big problem. There are tuna uh, over, over the world, and all for the people right now. Perhaps free fishes, uh, more natural, could be a problem in the next year. But I think uh, find new ways to to assess cancer, to prevent cancer or other disease could be another problem, but more important, at least in my opinion, than this one. Good, good. Yeah, thank you. Good comment. Any responses for Rafa? I, I'm personally inclined to agree. Um, while it may be a big problem, there are many other far more pressing or urgent problems, um, especially with, with seafood being, um, as you said, what, 30% of the food that we eat? Yeah, so... Um, and certainly we could, if we decided as human beings to quit eating seafood, we certainly could do that um, and, and replenish. It would be sad. I love seafood. but <laughs> uh, Any other comments on that first question? Uh, yeah, I have a question, teacher, yeah. Stephanie. Yeah. Do you think the consumers, I mean, eat more fish more than meat or they eat than more fish? Oh, I don't know. Um, for myself as a consumer, I probably eat more meat um, just because it is cheaper and more common. Um, but my guess is it's different for every population. Like um, a population, like maybe an island population in the ocean, they probably eat much more than I do as a as someone from a landlocked place. Uh, so it's a depend about price. Okay. I, yeah, I think that's one one factor for me. Um, I think it depends of the on the country. In some countries, they have the they used to eat uh, more fish, and uh, I think uh, it's uh, something uh, very related con with the cultural with cultural things. No? Yeah, good. Yeah, good point. If if you if your culture eats seafood regularly, then it's going to be more important for you to eat seafood. Yes, because here in Spain, for example, the we have the Mediterranean diet mm -hmm. that is a kind of um, uh, we used to eat uh, more vegetables and uh, more uh, fish and I know people of other countries that I, they don't used to eat fish because they normally prefer to eat meat so I think it depends on the countries and yeah yeah, yeah good. Um, good point yeah thank you I have a question about, about what you said. You said one kilogram of meat it is more cheap than fish. So how much costs one kilogram where you live right now? Um, well, where I live right now, um, well, in I'm in the Czech Republic right now, and I actually eat less meat here than I ever have in my whole life, um, mostly because I don't cook and I only go out to eat once or twice a week. Um, I'm also unfamiliar with kilograms, but I could tell you that in the United States, um, a pound of chicken breast, for example, would cost maybe $4. Um, okay. Yeah, and that, so that would be a pound for me is like four or five meals. 
um, so much cheaper. Whereas seafood, um, seafood would be maybe maybe twice the price. Um, because here in my city, the meat, I mean, especially we have a different scale. We have kilogram, not pound. So mm -hmm. the one meat, one kilogram of meat, it's about thirteen dollars or twelve dollars. About beef, when one kilogram beef. Oh wow, wow! Yeah, so that's but quite the fish it is more cheap. Okay. Yeah, but the fish it is more cheap. Yeah. So I guess a lot of this does have to do with where you are. Um, and also, as Maria said, your culture. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Where I'm from, beef is beef and chicken are both very cheap, but seafood, especially ocean seafood, has to be imported from far away, so it costs more. Um, anyone else? Any comments on that? Different perspectives. Continuously, if I may, on the lying of the article, also uh, um, there is an important relationship between the transportation of seafood from one country to another country, and its cost is at a cost in the production of seafood that is important. Uh, as the article says, uh, it's important to consume food, uh, seafood from the area that you are living, um, it decreases the impact of in pollution, uh, also the impact on on the living seafood of your country. Mm. This is another important the transport the cost of transportation of seafood mm. from one country to other could be another point to take in count. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Thank you. Um, yeah, if you, if you live close to the ocean, the importation costs are, are little, but if you live very far, it's going to be more. Um, and, that, and then that price is factored into, I'm sure, all the other aspects of fishing. Good. Good comments. Let's, um, let's look at the second discussion question and see, um, besides overfishing, what other problems do our oceans and rivers presently face? And we touched on it a little bit with references to pollution, but let's see if we can get a little more specific. I think that main problem with our oceans is pollution. Mm -hmm. And, and the main, main material is plastic. Mm. Because when plastic uh, got to ocean, it doesn't, how to say... <laughs> decompose. It does not decompose. decompose. Yeah. Yeah. It, stay, it stays in the water. Uh, fish eat this plastic. Mm. The fish dying. Uh, birds eat fish. Birds dying as well. This is yeah, a problem. That is. It's a huge problem. Has anyone seen that? Um, oh, I forgot what it's called. There's just basically this massive floating pile of rubbish um, in the ocean somewhere. Has anyone heard of that or seen photographs of that? Yeah, I've read about that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of horrifying to see. Very saddening. Yeah. So that's the kind of pollution that's really causing pretty big problem. Uh, um. And uh, I remember uh, it was I don't know a war in Iraq, and uh, there are tons of uh, oil was on the sea, and after uh, a ship accident, uh, ship was carrying oil. Mm -hmm. And they and uh, the oil pour on the ocean, and uh, the ocean uh, turned into black, and many uh, fish uh, died. Yeah, yeah. So, so not just the physical garbage, but our oil spills as well, um, causing tons of problems for ocean life. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I think that's right because the one of problems of oceans and rivers here, we don't care about it. So we put the oil in ocean. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so again, uh, we see a little bit of cultural impact, too, what, um, how, how, how garbage and oil is disposed of might vary in different parts of the world, yet the world is connected, so it affects everyone. Um, great. Good comments. Um, anyone else on, on the um, pollution? Related to pollution, I think we are assisting to an increase of in the surface of the water of the ocean, an increase of the degrees of the temperature of the ocean's um, temperature. Um, for this reason, many species could be in dangerous in dangerous of extinction too, because they are they need an environment with um, a temperature less than we are assisting right now could be oh. another factor. Yeah. Yeah, so the so global warming again is having a big impact on the ocean, uh, warming the ocean water um, and of course changing the environment for the creatures that live there. Good. Great. All right. Well, as a teacher, um, of course, I'm a big proponent of education. So I would like to get to question three and ask you, what, what is the best way to educate young people about environmental problems? Um, what do you think? Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you would because I don't know myself. <laughs> you um, can't. You can't educate young people. <laughs> yeah, that's my my thoughts are kind of that it's very hard to get young people to see outside of themselves. Um, so you'd have to find a way to make it really be in their face or make it so that they see how it, how it has an impact on their life. Um, I think oftentimes young people don't, don't see the connections between the bigger world and their lives. Yeah, so I don't know how I would go about educating on this subject to young people. Maybe um, some really graphic videos on, on YouTube. Would, would do the trick. <laughs> <laughs> Information could be one of the best ways to make a prevention to, for young people. Mm, give information with YouTube or with documentaries about this issue could be <clears throat> the best way to have a real information what is happening. Because young people many times are only thinking in themselves or what happened in the little area that they are living and if we could give them an important perspective about the big the big view of the pollution of the dangers of extinction extinction of animals could be a good way to make prevention in this issue could be <laughs> yeah, I think that would be the best bet, to, to get the information to them and then to try to make them see how it relates to their lives. Yeah. Do you think uh, adults or old people care about the environment? Maybe we have to <laughs> educate ourselves the first. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Good point. Yeah, well, true. <laughs> true. Then, <We're>, yeah. <laughs> then we can educate young people, maybe. Yeah, that's true. And I, I personally don't know much about, uh, guilty, I should say, um, I don't know tons about environmental problems. Um, uh, so, yeah. For, 
for example, in my country, government also don't care about the environment, and uh, they uh, government uh, give the damage environment. They just think about uh, their benefits or power, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't use the environment uh, smart way or uh, clear way. Mm. I think. Oh. Yeah, really good point. I'd have to say the same of my government. Um, yeah, to really get them to care, we'd have to make um, we'd have to make solutions to the environmental problems be profitable. Uh, yeah. if you, at least for the United States, if people could make money saving the environment, then the environment would be saved. <laughs> but my prediction, if I may about the future of young people, it's they going to eat worms, proteins from worms, they are burgers from worms, uh, yeah, it's real. I read some articles about the future of proteins in young people could be about worms, there are many research and develops with worms um, to make burgers or sushi with Worms more than fish or meat could be. Wow! Yeah. Well, that would that would get uh, that would get some attention. Certainly, I'm sure the the people would start paying attention if they have to be eating worms. <laughs> Gross. I hope it doesn't come to that anytime soon. Um, good. Really good comments. Anyone else? Any last comments? Um, yep, I have a question. Yeah. Yes, Thayer? Oh, um, okay. Yeah. What if the people stop... Yeah, it's just a question, hypothetical question. What if the people stop eating fish? What do you think the fish will do? I, th I hope. Um, I think that they would probably start to regenerate. I think if we... if Maybe if everyone stopped eating seafood for five years, um, then the animals would have a chance to regenerate themselves. Um, Be clouded. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if that's possible, but... <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, what do you think? Anyone else? I think that we'll fight each other inside the water. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be impossible. Like, I mean, on one level, of course, it's possible that all humans could stop, but in reality, I think it, would, it wouldn't be possible to actually get people to stop um, eating their favorite food. <laughs> yeah, and maybe illegal uh, fish uh, Fishing will be increasing, and the price of fish uh, uh, will increase. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it certainly would, right? Definitely, definitely. Good. Um, well, all right, everyone. This was um, this was our discussion starters about the end of sushi. Uh, I hope the end of sushi is many years away. It is one of my favorite foods. Um, but thank you all for helping me think a little more deeply on the topic, um, take it a little more seriously. Um, I appreciate all your comments and questions, as always, and I hope to see you again in another class very soon. Okay, bye. Okay. Bye. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Bye, bye, everyone. See you. Bye. Bye.